Yesterday, I received news of a pastor that died um, due to COVID-19. I wanted to ask this question to all of you. Why did he die from COVID-19? I also know another pastor who is seriously ill uh, due to COVID-19. Is God not answering their prayers? Is it because of lack of faith? That's what we're looking at today. Before I do, I'd like to share some announcements. Uh, the first being that this evening we meet for prayer at 7.30, and I encourage all of you to come. Let's not neglect the gathering of the saints at 7.30. Of course, home groups continue and all the other meetings continue as well. This coming Friday, the youth meet in church in person. And the WOW event takes place on Zoom. You'll be looking at Exodus chapter 7 to 12. I mean, you're going to be going through those chapters. And my wife will be speaking on um, judgment and how God brings salvation in judgment. So um, you're um, going to be blessed by that. So please, ladies, make sure that you attend. That's this coming Friday at 7.30 on Zoom. You will receive the ID number and so forth. Then Saturday, we gather. Uh, first gathering is at 10 o'clock. The second is at 11.30. Please register if you haven't already done so. If there's no space, then leave your name on the waiting list, and you'll be contacted if any space does become available. But please do leave your name. And also, please come on time. Thank you to all those who make an effort to come on time. Our gathering lasts one hour, and we don't want to waste any time, especially we don't want to come late. We want to make sure that our children know that church is essential and is important, and we need to be there on time. And uh, invite, uh, we invite all of you to bring your children and your teens. Don't leave your teens. Don't leave anyone at home. That is the time when you come together for the fellowship of the saints to honor the Lord to listen to his word, to worship the Lord together, and to encourage each other. I also want to remind you that uh, the budget meeting takes place this coming Saturday at 7.30 p.m. And that budget meeting, of course, is for members. If you're not a member, you can attend. But right now, all the documents were sent to members. If you have regularly attend LCF and you're not a member, I encourage you to please sign up and, and take the course. It's a great course. It's a four session course and um, it, it shows you where we stand doctrinally what we practice as a church the importance of the gospel and so forth and the importance of fellowship and what we uh, are, are what our calling is as a church please be a member don't just attend be a member don't just be connected to lcf become a member full-fledged member so i encourage you to do that if you're baptized then please uh, make that application just send in a request by email and we'll send that application off to you. So members, be there on time, 7.30, this Saturday. Um, Christian cards, remember that? Christmas, uh, Christmas, Christmas cards, I apologize. Christmas cards for those who are uh, make, who make use of the Ministry of Salvation Army. Chris Alash has asked us for this. Those cards can be either in French or in English, and they're directed to men. So please keep that in mind. It's the men that make use of the ministry there. Let's just bless these men. They have no family, have no friends, and when they receive a card, it just ministers to them. So let's bless them that way. We want to thank all the men that came out uh, this past Monday to load the truck. Over 2,000 boxes came in. That's unusual for a time like this. So many churches uh, did not participate. So many other organizations did not participate because of COVID-19, because they shut down, many other reasons. We we're grateful to God for every shoebox that came in. And we were able to load those boxes because of you men. And every one of you who filled those boxes, every one of you who were involved, all the volunteers, thank you. You did an amazing job. And thank you to Cordula and Darlene for your coordination and all the sacrifices involved in making sure this project goes ahead. And we're going to pray for those children that are going to receive those shoe boxes, that they not only come to receive love in that way, in a tangible way, but most importantly, that they would come to know the gospel of Jesus Christ. And uh, regarding the Christmas gathering poll, we polled you to get your feedback on whether you preferred Christmas Eve or Christmas Day. So the um, by a slim majority, Christmas Day won. We're going to have two gatherings on Christmas Day, one at 9 a.m. and then the other one is at, going to be at 10.30 a.m. Okay, Keep that. Please mark that date. We want to be together. There will be no gathering on Saturday. So that's our gathering on Friday, not, not on Saturday the 26th. 
gathering will be on Saturday, uh, Friday morning, sorry, at 9 a.m., the first one, and then the 10.30 a.m., the second one. Just keep that in the back of your mind. Mark that on your calendars. So now let's deal with this topic. I received this news yesterday, and of course it was sad. And then I, another friend of mine, someone I know quite well, is in the hospital, and he's. it seems that he's recovering, but he ha he was in critical conditions for several days. And um, many Christians, well-meaning Christians, believe that that should not happen to us as Christians, because in Psalm 91, they would say, this is what they claim, we have a promise, and we should claim this promise. And the promise is, you will not be afraid of the terror by night, or of the arrow, sorry, not, yes, that's right. It's uh, not Psalm 139. It is Psalm 91, right? I think I said Psalm 139. So you will not be afraid of the terror by night or of the arrow that flies by day, of the plague that stalks in darkness or of the destruction that devastates at noon. A thousand may fall at your side and 10,000 at your right hand, but it shall not approach you. And there are Christians that, claim this passage, and they claim it every day. I've heard of Christians who've kept their Bibles open to this passage just to be protected from any kind of disease or any kind of misfortune that would come against them and their family or their home or their business. I've had Christians come to me and ask that I would pray so that their business would prosper and that it would be protected from all misfortune. Um, and Christians also believe that if we claim the promises, uh, we can be blessed. But if we don't claim them, it means that there's a lack of faith and therefore the blessing escapes us, just passes right by us. And then there are other Christians that say that, you know, uh, there is the power of the tongue uh, that has life and death. And therefore we are to speak positively. We are to make positive statements about our lives, about our success. And Joe Osteen is very popular for this kind of position. And they base themselves on the book of Proverbs, where it, we read in chapter 18, verse 21, death and life are in the power of the tongue. So if you speak negatively, you're going to call death and everything negative to come into your life. If you speak positively and you make positive statements, then you are opening the door to blessings. And, you know, all of this kind of thinking is basically a, a demonstration that we are not rightly dividing God's word. You know, we're told in Scripture to rightly divide Scripture. And that means there are passages that refer, uh, that, that apply rather to Israel. There are passages that apply to the church. There are passages that apply to the days of Noah and so forth. We cannot take texts that apply strictly to Israel and then apply them to us. To us. We, we can't do that. And there are passages that apply to Peter specifically. Is the kind of death that he was going to die. We can't take that passage and apply it to us because that's not the way we're going to die necessarily. So we need to rightly divide God's word. So why did these brothers die? Why did this brother, this pastor of Naples, his name is Raffaele Frezza, why did he pass away from complications due to COVID-19? Because scripture says in Psalm 139 verse 16, in your book were all written the days that were ordained for me. Simple. That's when he was supposed to die. God ordains the days that are for us. That's the reason why. We're not to be afraid of death. We're not to be afraid of disease. We're not to be afraid of viruses. Scripture tells us very clearly that we're not to be afraid of anything. In Matthew 10, 28, do not fear those who can kill the body. And the virus can kill the body but are unable to kill the soul. The COVID-19 cannot kill your soul. There's another virus that kills the soul. It's called sin. That's what we need to be concerned about. Thankfully, we have the remedy, the death of Christ on the cross. His death atoned for our sins as God's people. And therefore, we don't need to fear a virus. But rather, Jesus continues, fear him who is able to destroy both soul, soul and body and hell. So who are we to fear? We are to fear the Lord because God can kill the body. And he does, by the way, he brings an end to all life. 
on earth at a certain point. And most importantly, he sends people to hell who do not repent. That's who we are to fear. That's what Jesus says very clearly. We're not to fear a virus. We're not to fear individuals who can do us harm. Because then, were, then if we live that way, we're, we're basically being governed by fear. And God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So what does Psalm 91 really mean? Well, Psalm 91 is a promise that God made to his people, his people, Israel. Because in Deuteronomy uh, chapter 7, verse 15, God said to his people who would keep his covenant, these words, the Lord will remove from you all sicknesses and he will not put on you any of the harmful diseases of Egypt. That's the promise that God made to his people if they would obey his covenant. All those laws that were the 613 laws that are under the old covenant, every single one of them. Of course, we know the story. They didn't follow God's laws and therefore not only did the disease come, there were incursions from different countries. There was poverty. There was drought. There were pestilences and so forth. But God would bring his people to repentance. They would repent. Then God would remove the hand of judgment. And they would fall back into idolatry and so forth. This was their cycle. But it doesn't apply to the church. Now, listen. If, if, if Look at Elisha, for example. Elisha fell sick. In fact, his illness, according to 2 Kings 13, verse 14, his illness... Um, Led, him, uh, led to his death. Now, Elisha was not afraid of his illness. He, we don't even see that he prayed that God would heal him. In fact, after he died, someone happened to fall, who wasn't even a Jew, by the way, not even a Hebrew. He happened to die, be shot, or an arrow hit him, and died, and he fell into the very same hole where Elisha was buried. And it says that he recovered. Elisha never recovered, and he came back to life. And that's a picture of Christ, by the way. Christ died so that we could live. And the church is represented by that person who was killed. But that's not the point right now. The point is this, that God's people are not afraid of viruses. They're not afraid of death. And they don't have to claim Psalm 91. And they don't have to be afraid that if they say the wrong words, a disease is going to come into their house. If we do live that kind of way, we're living in fear. If we have to keep our Bibles open to Psalm 91, it's because we don't understand the scriptures. We are blessed beyond measure. That's what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 2. We've been chosen according to his foreknowledge. We belong to him. And there's reserved for us an inheritance that is undefiled and kept in heaven for us. We are kept by the power of God. First Peter chapter 1. We are preserved. That's what the teaching of the preservation or the perseverance of the saints is about. We are kept till the very end. Those the Lord saves are saved till the very end because he who started this good work in us will fulfill it and he will not fall short. That's, that's the whole point. We're his by creation and by redemption. And if we have been regenerated by the power of the Holy Spirit, if we are God's children, we don't have to fear a virus. You don't have to fear any misfortune. That, that verse is not some kind of a, an amulet, or some kind of a rabbit's foot. That, that protects us. That is ridiculous. To use scripture that way is wrong. And all the Christians that are doing that, they should stop that. And every pastor that is preaching that way should stop it. They should start to rightly divide scripture. And, and so the people of God get encouraged and not live in fear. Look at Paul. Paul was in prison. You, you ever read, please pray that I can come out of prison? He doesn't pray that way. He says, my time of departure is at hand. I'll be uh, like a like a, 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 a an offering, a wine offering that's going to be, people be poured out. That's what he believed. He said he was going to die. Well, then he, why didn't he claim the, the, the promise of protection? Why didn't he say, Lord, deliver me. I have deliverance with me. Now, does God deliver? Of course he does. We see God delivered Peter from prison on one instance, though he was ready to die because he thought it was a dream. And then by the end of his death, he is executed according to tradition and he's He's crucified and crucified upside down. That was a painful death, awful death. He doesn't run away from it. He's not afraid. That's deliverance. The deliverance is being delivered from fear so that we only fear God. 
Because if we don't fear God, we fear men, we fear viruses, we fear the future, we fear the surroundings, we fear circumstances. The reason why this pastor died of COVID-19 is because his days were numbered according to what God had ordained for him. And the reason why others get recovered is because God does not want them to be uh, to be to die that way. He wants them to recover. Simple. It's not because my prayer is more effective. All the ones that Jesus healed eventually died. They all died. That miraculous intervention was provisional. Salvation is permanent. That's the ultimate healing. And if you don't know Christ, you can get all healing in this world, all the blessings of this world. You have nothing. At the end, you are lost. What good is it, Jesus says, if you have the whole world and you lose your soul? But if you have Christ, if he is your savior, if you have repented of your sin, you've been born again by the power of the Holy Spirit, you are now Christ's. You have nothing to fear. Nothing. No matter what happens to you, no matter what misfortune may come to you, you can rejoice in that misfortune. You can give God glory. And the sufferings and everything that will happen to you cannot overshadow the glory that is yours in Christ Jesus. Let these words be an encouragement to you. See you this evening at prayer. This coming Saturday, I'll be speaking about the great white throne judgment. That's an important theme. We're going to be dwelling on that verse in 1 Peter chapter 4, verse 5, just for the next little while as we look at that theme. So I pray that you will be blessed this evening, especially at prayer, and then again on Saturday. Ladies, the wild event on Friday. God be with you.